Hello, I'm Asif Farouk of Finextra and we're here at EBA Day in Amsterdam and today I'm with Tom Lambrecht of Sopra Banking. So Tom, thank you for joining me. There's been lots of discussion at this year's event whether banks should even stay in payments. What is your thoughts on that? Yes, that is indeed uh, a very hot topic uh, at this moment. Of course, we have seen in the recent past that payments has always been a revenue generator for banks. Uh, I have met banks who say that one third of their revenues were generated in the payments domain. Today, this is no longer the case. And uh, even for some banks, the payments domain has become a cost factor instead of a revenue generator. This is one uh, item. The second item is that payments has become a commodity service for the retail customers. Right. If you ask a retail customer if he has ever changed from one bank to another bank because they processed a payment a little bit faster than the other bank, nobody will give a, a positive answer towards that. But on the other hand, we see also the so-called GAFA players like Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, entering the payment space. So there must be an interesting angle for uh, banks and new parties to enter the payments domain. So yes, banks should stay in payments because the party controlling the payment value chain has two important advantages. First of all, there is a direct contact with the retail customer. And second of all, you have the possibility to offer value added services to those customers. Okay. What are some of these additional services that you're, you're talking about and what can banks implement? So uh, those value added services are often linked to the digital wallet. So we have seen the first generation of digital wallets and the, the only advantage of the first generation was that I was no longer obliged to take my wallet and to pay with money. The only thing that they did was to digitalize the payment. I could use my phone to make a payment. Today we see the second generation of digital wallets. So banks have the possibility to offer value added services before, during and after the purchase. I will give some examples to make it uh, more clear. So if you notice as a bank that your retail customer is in a store and he wants to buy a flat screen TV, but you notice that he doesn't have sufficient funds on his account to buy that TV, you can offer him perhaps a consumer loan or a consumer credit to be able to acquire uh, the television. Or uh, when he is in the same store for the flat screen TV, you can offer him a price comparison tool that he can see, okay, I am in this store, but I can buy this TV somewhere else for a better price. Or when you have a partnership as a bank with that store, you can offer him a, a discount. So send him an SMS with a small discount to buy the TV. So this is before the purchase. During the purchase is of course a fast and smooth payment process. And after the purchase can be, for instance, when, he, when the client, when the customer bought uh, the, the expensive flat screen TV, uh, perhaps he is interested, interested in an extension of his guarantee service. So perhaps you are allowed to offer him an, um, a kind of insurance to have his guarantee period extended for a certain period. So banks in the vision of Sopra should build partnerships, uh, should build uh, that give them the possibility to offer value added services uh, to those customers. Okay, let's talk about uh, disintermediation and the strategies that a bank may employ to avoid being disintermediated. What are your thoughts? The thoughts of Sopra Banking are clearly that banks should try to move to an open banking model uh, via, collaborative, uh, via collaborations with a lot of different parties. Mm -hmm. And um, we have seen that in, in other industries as well, because if you tackle this approach with banks, they say, okay, very a nice, interesting idea, but perhaps difficult to implement. But there are examples of other industries where that model was very successful. For instance, the, the automotive industry where you have two different car manufacturers, the Japanese Toyota car manufacturer and the, the French Piazza Citroën manufacturer, their share components in their cars. So this is an example where two competitors in the same space have found a way to collaborate. Right. 
they have also um, they also established collaborations with IT parties and, innov and uh, innovator parties. The fact that we have today a car assistance in our car is a proof of a collaboration between a car manufacturer and an IT company. Also today, uh, Google and Tesla are having chats together to create the self-driving car. Another example of a car manufacturer having a collaboration with an innovative party. The same, the same model should be applied in the banking industry where banks look for partnerships with other banks, with IT players and with innovative parties like Google and Apple and Facebook to uh, be able to offer value-added services on top of their own banking services. And the reality shows that in the end, all parties have benefited from that collaborative model.